Hi students, hope you're having a nice day today. This is Professor Tyberg, and I wanted to uh, talk about counterarguments because in your essay you are required to have a counterargument, and some of you may not have been introduced to this concept before. So, what is a counterargument? Well, counterarguments have three parts. First, your opponent's view. Second, a concession. Third, a rebuttal. And so we'll go through these three parts here briefly. But first, why use a counterargument? How does it strengthen your essay? Uh, well, by anticipating your opponent's response to your thesis. So you've thought ahead. Second, it demonstrates that you are knowledgeable about the major opinions on all sides of the argument. So essentially, it shows that you've done your research and there aren't gaps in your knowledge about this discussion or debate. And then uh, third, it gets your opponents to listen to you by proving you are listening to them. If you know their side um, and can say it in a non-biased way, they get a sense that you are actually listening and that's going to go a long way toward convincing your audience. Okay, and where does a counter-argument go in your essay? Some students um, ask this question and typically a uh, counter-argument will go right after your introduction if you have kind of a controversial thesis maybe you want to clear the air and just present your counter-argument um, pretty soon in the essay otherwise a very common place to see a counter-argument is right before your conclusion at the end of your body paragraphs um, you can kind of acknowledge your opponent's view there um, right before you close. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of a counterargument in an essay with with this following thesis. Um, so this is not the counterargument, this is just a thesis that I'm using to build the counterargument. Um, this is a thesis on the topic of um, whether or not we should teach, we should still teach cursive to elementary school students. And um, my thesis is, my own view as a writing teacher, is that schools should teach cursive still because making the effort to write legibly in script for one's reader helps a student become aware of the importance of audience. And now let's go into a counter-argument for that um, thesis. So if you remember, the first step of the counter-argument is your opponent's view. Include your opponent's view and you want to present your opponent's view without bias. So you're not going to give your slant, your opinion, when you're um, presenting um, what, what your naysayers um, believe. For example, some educators argue that cursive has become obsolete. They maintain that students will not need to know cursive for their classes or for their careers because the majority of writing occurs on computer keyboards. Moreover, they observe that when students do need to write instead of type, print handwriting would work to communicate just as effectively as cursive. So that's a, that's a strong point, um, and uh, here I'm trying to present it without my opinion. I'm just putting it out there, the opponent's view. So the next part is the concession. You should admit your opponent has a valid point. Otherwise, they may not listen to you. So you need to show you're listening and show that you're, you're validating that, you know, they, they have a point. They're not crazy. For example, so here's the concession, and it's, it's fairly brief. It's in the dependent clause of the sentence here. While these teachers are correct that students type more than they used to, and that print handwriting instead of writing in cursive can be effective, so this is a, a pivot here from the opponent's view to my rebuttal. It's, um, this concession is, is a pivot or a, a transition or a bridge. And then I come back with uh, my rebuttal, the third step of a counter argument. You want to stand your ground and come back with an even stronger point. You're not trying to crush them in this combative way. You're, you're just trying to show them that based on the research, you have a stronger point. Okay, so here's the example. I still maintain that when students learn cursive, they learn an integral skill that is separate from typing and print handwriting. 
Indeed, with typing and print handwriting, students do not think as much about how their writing appears to their audience. Whereas with cursive, like calligraphy but only less so, the students learn that forming letters is an art in itself, and that the presentation of one's script will have a distinct effect on their audience. Furthermore, if students learn audience awareness early in elementary school, they will be more prepared to learn about rhetoric in their high school and college classes. Okay, so that's the completion. That's the third step of the counter argument. We had the, um, we presented the opponent's view, we had the concession, and we had the rebuttal. Um, so you need um, each of those three steps in your counter argument. Um, I hope that clarifies what a counter argument is and how to write one. Please message me if you have any questions about that. And have a great day. Um, talk to you soon.